Hey, good morning, Moms and Master Books. Randy here with my lovely bride, Kristen, also our curriculum development editor. She was on the way out of the building, and I snagged her and said, I actually put her on the spot in front of people and said, would you like to come in and do that with me? And she was like, I'd love to. <laughs> so, hey, I want to talk to you about Wonders of Creation series. Um, I'm hoping the last couple of times we've done a Facebook Live, it kicked me off. And so if that happens and you're watching, uh, we will for sure go back on with another, a second one. So, but the Wonders of Creation series, let's see. That's a lot of books. There's a lot of books. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. He invites me in and then he beats me with the books. <laughs> Whack. <laughs> wow, that hurt. <laughs> That's some momentum. I'm going to Florida and I'm going to be battered and bruised. <laughs> Say my wife, my husband, my husband keeps her. On camera and alive. <laughs> Witnesses even. That's the way to start. Okay. <laughs> so the Wonders of Creation series is nine books strong. Um, it's We've sold well over $100,000 uh, worth of these books. It's been available for some time, but it was in, we've been updating it and adding to the series. The nine books, there's a special, um, I'll post it in this, is nine books for $99.99 and free shipping. And even if, um, we're going to talk about the books quick, and then we're going to talk also about them being part of a curriculum, uh, the general science curriculum, which you helped lay out and create, right? I was a part of it, okay. part of the team. I think it was the one of the first curriculums we did was with the Wonders. They were different. They were called something different. Yes, the and they had study guides that went with them. Yeah, they were like oceanography and mm -hmm. different ones. Anyways, um, so first we're going to talk about the books, and then we'll talk about uh, the curriculum. But even for any age, these books are just fantastic for a library because they have such good information, like I'll illustrate. So one of the books, the ecology book, um, now in the Wonder series, there's kind of the new books that have a little bit more of an updated format mm -hmm. for, for younger grades, middle grades, and then high school, right? Mm -hmm. um, but like the ecology book is not part of the general science series, but it is one of the Wonder sets. So if you bought the nine for $99.99, you would actually get the ecology book with it. But what makes these science books unique, and, and I don't think you're going to find very many of these books like this, they're all done from a biblical creation perspective. So as you study science, the, the kids are going to get a very biblical worldview. Um, let's see. And, of course, they're beautiful. They are beautiful. So we have uh, level one, level two, level three. There's different colors, and then there's a... Uh, the big five, which are the big questions, who, what, where, why, and how. And so when we come to something like harmony and creation, the big five questions would be who created the world? What does Trinity mean in relation to God? Where do we see relationships in life? What is an understanding of a triune God? Important, why? Uh, why is an understanding of a triune God important for the origin of love and observations that most organisms are in cooperative relations with one another. And how does the Bible provide a basis for science? And so this is something that the younger students and the older students would read, then the older students and the junior high students would read here, then the high school, junior high, and high school students would read here. Now, in our curriculum, it's not set up that way. So this would be more of an individual study or a morning basket morning basket would be really good if you could do almost a unit study approach with this you could too. Mm -hmm. and these books are so rich but let me just give you a couple of examples so in a lot of school textbooks they actually still have you've probably even seen Henkel's little chart here that shows how his premise was that embryos look similar so the human embryo looks similar to a pig embryo which looks similar to a chick embryo that isn't even true anymore. It's been completely proven false, but it's still in on some textbooks. Well, and also that they go through the stages of evolution, which... They show the stages of evolution. Yeah, while they're forming, but they don't. He, right. all, he doctored the pictures. Right. 
And so in this book, as they begin talking about debunking evolution and looking at that, they actually give the facts about him, why he chose the worldview he did, and they start laying that foundation. So, you know what? I got to just make sure. Hey, everybody. If you have any questions, feel free to uh, feel free to post. Okay. So I'm just flipping through a couple that I highlighted that you can see. Um, the wonder why, why do we kill and eat animals? Uh, and then like the big five questions that you would want to know from what's on today's menu would be who is Eugene Odom? What is the ecosystem ecology? What does energy, where does energy go? Why do many of God's creatures have to die and be eaten? How have relationships changed since creation? So it addresses creation, the original intent, the fall, and the curse. And then there's some different words to know. And these really are no joke words, are they? No. Abiotic, autotroph, biotic, biodiversity, carnivore. Oh, boy. Chemototroph? Chemotroph? Chemototroph? I don't know. <laughs> Um, chemo autotroph. That sounds that's pretty it. good. Decomposer, ecological pyramid, food chain, food web, habitat, herbivore, heterotroph, niche, omnivore, photo autotroph, photosynthesis, saprophyte, scavenger, and trophic level. Those are pretty good. So in my family, when I was when I was young, I was tongue tied. So a lot of the words that I learned to pronounce were wrong. There were some vowels that I couldn't speak. So when it comes to word pronunciations, I don't know. I got those. If I got those right, though, <laughs> I can pretty much guarantee my word pronunciations aren't any better. I should have let you do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's okay. I was happy to let you. Here's here's another example. I mean, they're beautiful images, but sun power. And when it talks about the sun, it says, "Wonder why? Why did God create the sun after the earth and plants?" Do you know what day plants were created on in creation? There's a quiz. <laughs> Do you know what day the sun was created on in the, in the biblical account of creation? It was created on day four. So for people who talk about the biblical account of creation happening over long periods of time, the gap, um, theory. The gap theory and that type of thing, it leaves a huge issue. Uh, because the sun wasn't created until after the plants were, which God could do in a 24-hour period would be fine. Mm -hmm. um, and I think I, what I love about this is when, let's see, there's a, there's a whole paragraph before, but let me just read the last sentence. When God told us he made the sun on the fourth day, was he trying to communicate something? Was it to remind us that he is the source of life? not the sun. He is the supreme creator, the author of life, and the only one upon which we must depend. So throughout the whole series is they're learning really great scientific facts. There are some other really good things like why do we eat yogurt? Um, if we've had antibiotics, there's connections all through here. They're just fantastic. Um, but what they're going to get is a biblical worldview, and that's that's what we appreciate most about this series is that it's it's a fantastic um, opportunity for that. So the ecology book is one of the books in the series. It's Aubrey. She only calls during Facebook Lives. It's the only time she ever calls me. <laughs> the weather book, this is a great book for issues like what we just went through, discussing hurricanes and tornadoes and storms. We're going to learn about God created, what causes the Earth's weather, water in the atmosphere, thunderstorms, dangerous thunderstorms, hurricanes, winter storms, wild weather, climate in the past, climate change, God's creation, and you. Um, and then the whole book just has some fantastic illustrations and, and text. And this is also done in the format of a level one, level two, and level three, so that younger readers, elementary age readers can get it too. I think they list it as grade like five. Level one is younger readers, level two, middle, this is middle level. Yeah, some of them. And then upper. Have like age, age recommendations, recommendations in them too. And you can tell which ones. Because it says the new. The new are the ones that have the multi-levels. Not all of them. Not all of them? Yeah. Ecology book is in the new format. Okay. This, these, If they were published prior, 
Right. Then they would have this. Um, they're actually updated to it. Right. Some so, of them were written with that built in. Yes. So this is um, the weather book also on the back. I have to make sure I remember. Oh, yeah. There is an awesome poster for your classroom. Can I also say that for those of us like us that have the old books um, on our shelves, it is worth it to upgrade to the to the new. There's a lot of updated information. Um, there's more recent like hurricanes and things like mm -hmm. that that are covered in the newer editions <coughs> and some of the factual science stuff because even though science tries to claim it's God, we know it can't be God because it changes. Right. What we know actually Science changes. Yeah. And God never changes. Yes. Praise so, God for that. Amen. This, um, so the, the list price on the $16.99 with a whole set, I think they work out to, I don't know. <laughs> now nine for nine ninety nine, so about ten dollars. <laughs> yeah, I was thinking you can do this math. I really think okay. you can. <laughs> I need a little help from Charlie and Charlotte. Another uh, little thing that I'd like to share about this series is this series is actually the one that really um, gave us the idea that Masterbook needed to do curriculum mm -hmm. because these were such fantastic books and just full of such good information that I just hated to see them just sitting on a shelf and the kids not actually interacting with them. And so having it put into a curriculum, make sure that they um, interact with the material over the course of the year. And so um, it's really neat to actually see that come to pass. Yeah. This is a little different than some of the newer curriculum that we're publishing in that this uses um, what we would call a real world book and then mm -hmm. our teacher guides are developed around this so when you buy this set you have these books that will stay part of your library while well, the teacher guide is the consumable these will be used for years and years and right. we you know if there's a hurricane coming or there's questions about tornadoes or any of this these books have just they're a great place to go for that mm -hmm. um, the astronomy book written by Danny Faulkner he is a um, he has his doctorate in astrophysicist uh, with AIG. He's written, let's see, The Created Cosmos, The Expanse of Heaven. He's brilliant. Um, and this, this book goes through the eclipses, the, the calendars, um, the sun. In fact, I can tell you. Let's see. Let's see. What is astronomy? The night sky, the moon, the solar system, two kinds of planets, the sun, telescopes, History of astronomy, stars, extrasolar planets, star clusters and nebulae, our galaxy, the Milky Way, light travel time problem, which is something that you'll often hear if the Earth is millions of, if the Earth is only thousands of years old, how does the light um, get to the Earth in that amount of time? He addresses that. The expanding universe, quasars and active galaxies, cosmology, is that right? Cosmology? Cosmology. Okay. What's the other word? Cosmetology? Yeah. Okay. It's cosmology, <laughs> conclusion, and glossary. And so, um, and the, the images, the colors, the facts and information in this, um, just we, we guarantee that this will be a delight. If you want to. Presenting. Go ahead. No, I'm just watching to make sure I don't get hit by another book. <laughs> My arm hurts. <laughs> it's, I'm going to get this bruise. <sighs> uh, Anna is mocking. Anna's saying business math, Randy. There's a story about business math. That's why Kristen's here. <laughs> yes, business math. Randy's actually better now at business math than I am because he uses it more. But in college, I wasn't. And, no. <laughs> and the professor told me, you have Kristen. You'll be okay. And passed you. And passed me. <laughs> Even though you didn't pass the test. I was a dumb kid. You okay. weren't dumb. You were a late bloomer. In, in teenage, dumb as in, I was just dumb. <laughs> All right. The Ocean Book. Beautiful. Um, this also has the new format. 
it also has the poster that talks about the depths of the oceans and um, let's see where the Titanic sank to different facts about water cover 72% of our planet the average ocean depth is 12,000 feet deep and then all the way down into the very depths including the very bottom the hydrocoplegiac Google zone <laughs> I'm not even going to help you. Go ahead. <laughs> it's up to 35,000 feet deep, represents the deepest ocean trenches that could completely submerge Mount Everest with over a mile of seawater. And a few of the creatures that exist there include shrimp, flounder, anglerfish, jellyfish, and tube worms. Imagine that. So it's if you took Mount Everest and put it there, it would be a mile more of water over top of Mount Everest. That's how deep the deepest depths of the ocean. And the scripture that goes with that is, if I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me and your right hand shall hold me. That's pretty cool considering this cool. mountain. I feel like I'm gonna fix that. I don't think you quite. <laughs> <laughs> we I'm want the books. Not to hit you. We want the there books go. to go back. Perfect. <laughs> you were almost trying to hit me in the face. No, I did not. <laughs> By the time we're done, we'll beat each other up with the books here. Okay. Table of contents. We have introduction to the oceans, research in the deep oceans, physical characteristics of the oceans, composition of the ocean waters, tide, waves, and currents, weather, harvesting the ocean, marine life exploring the coral relief, ocean vessels and exploration, the Genesis flood, and then a glossary. This book actually was just 2017. One of them, that, it was one of the uh, more recent ones that we've done. And we updated. Yeah, that was updated to the new, new format. Let's see, the ocean currents. People are stuffing stuff under my door. Special delivery. <laughs> Harvesting the ocean. Maybe it's a bill like you get at a hotel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. My eviction notice. So um, the oceans book is in the new format. And then the mineral book is another. This is one of this the one was created in the newest right format. created in the right format. So it's mm -hmm. not new, but it is a mineral book. This is awesome. This book is so awesome. It actually goes through different minerals. Um, let me see if I can find. All from a biblical creation perspective. Um, what are you looking for? The priest clothing. And so we have the priest clothing, and then it tells here each of the different types of minerals that he was to wear on his breastplate of judgment. That kind of cool and all through it relates the minerals that are found on the earth to the biblical um to to different biblical passages but let's see we forgot to sticky tap these I did. well <laughs> so we have the scarlet thread and colored stones where do we find minerals what is a mineral how do i identify a mineral discovering the minerals in the bible the world of valuable minerals, minerals and creation science, minerals in the lordship of Jesus, building a mineral collection, mineral identification, biblical references for minerals, periodic table of elements, and then the subject. And then this also has one of these handy dandy posters. I can only do it. Try not to get hit. <laughs> <laughs> Mineral pigments around the world. And so there's different um, pigment classifications that are created from the minerals in a poster. So this says, this ancient Mayan burial chamber called the Tomb of the Red Queen got its name from the bright red cinnabar powder that covers many of the objects in the sarcophagus. Yes. <laughs> All right, so I got that one done. And I've got to say, um, 
the quality of these books, like the they're all hardcover and the the design work that they did, I think is just um, incredible. Our family loves to study minerals. Yes. So uh, the mineral book is here now. So those four books that I just showed you, the mineral book, astronomy, weather, and ocean make up our general science one course. And, and ideally, um, general science is taught in junior high, mm -hmm. seven and eight. So we've moved them to that level, but we do have families that do this general science one for a high school. Uh, they'll do general science one, general science two as um, a high school science as well, along with like chemistry and biology. Mm -hmm. So you just want to do more of the, um, I would require more of the activities to be done, maybe some extra reports or some extra research projects. Thicken it up a little bit. Yep. So you could For use it school. as a spine pretty easily and then have some extra reports. And, and we get asked a lot, do I have to do general science one first or can I do general science two first? They're interchangeable. Mm -hmm. So you can actually, actually that's my plan for one of my kids is to do general science two first and then general science one. Okay. It's just for that kid. It'll work better. So you actually, you could buy the full set for nine ninety nine or for ninety nine ninety nine, and then buy the two teacher guides and have the mm -hmm. two years of chemistry. But chemistry. so that would be of <laughs> general, general science. science. My brain's everywhere today. So we have a lot of projects going on. It's hard not to have your mind everywhere. It is. It is. And then have your daughter put you on a sugar free fast and your brain really goes. <laughs> <laughs> One of my daughters thinks that's a good thing to do. <sighs> she put me on it too, but I. You're not doing the sugar. I free. had sugar in my coffee. <laughs> I'm wishing I did. So the cave book. Um, now the cave book is not in a new. Uh, it's not in the new format. Jamie missed the age groups, and Anna had said I think fifth to six is level one, level two is seven to eight, and level three is ninth and up. If you're just doing the books, if you're doing the curriculum, then um, seven. What do we have in the books? Uh, seven through twelve. Yes. Karen says, if I have an eighth grader use this for science, could a sixth grader jump in? I say yes. Yeah, if you're finding that they're having some difficulty answering all of the questions, then you may, you may want to just adjust some of the questions and maybe have them join in some of the activities rather than taking them on solo. Right. Doing them in a partnership with either you or an older student. And the, the courses, master book courses, are different a little bit that they don't, than the books. The books have the three levels. The courses is more of a question and answer type format. Yes. The books are three levels. The teacher guides are not. The teacher guides are targeted um, starting at seventh grade and up. I would, you know, you don't want to just hand those teacher guides off to a younger student, right. um, a fifth grader um, per se. You'd want to interact more if you're going to use it with a younger student. But they could definitely learn vocabulary. They could do. Oh, absolutely. Do it and work mm -hmm. it. So, yeah. Let's see. The teacher guides are geared towards seventh and eighth grade, ideally, but mm -hmm. are used also in above. Uh, the mineral book, yeah, the mineral book is kind of the quiet. Um, it came in at a time when uh, the marketing team was transitioning. It didn't get quite as much publicity, but when you actually see it, it's like, oh my goodness, it's it phenomenal. Is a great book. It is have. phenomenal. Let's see. Be able to post a direct link. Yes, we will have a direct link to the set. We also put it in on the announcement, but I will we'll be sure to do that. Um, doing number two first. Stevia. We have Stevia at home. Stevia at yeah, home. You can use Stevia. <laughs> Daughter is doing two first. We were on a walk after a storm. She was telling me all about the sediments. That's cool, Laura. Um, the cave book is, uh, they study humans in caves, caves and mythology, caves and cars, ca classifying caves, exploring caves, and studying caves. And this book, um, it's not in the new format, but it's still very graphic, very um, laid out. It's really good. 
Now we live in Northwest Arkansas, which there's caves everywhere around um, that are fascinating. How does echolocation work? Because bats live in caves. Yes. It's caves and what lives in them and what grows in them. Good day. It's interesting. My daughters went camping this week in they went into a cave in Arkansas, and the first thing they said is millions of years ago, which um, they were concerned that they were trusting their lives with somebody who <laughs> had a millions very bad, of years. <laughs> who had a biblical world or a counter biblical worldview. So they were hoping they wouldn't be millions of years to get out. Okay, so we have the cave book, the fossil book by Dr. Gary and Mary Parker. Gary Parker is. Uh, for a number of years, he was one of the leading voices in the creation science um, evangelism movement. Uh, he's presented with Ken Ham and Answers in Genesis. He's currently retired, but this goes all through fossils and talks about different fossils, where fossils are located, some of your basic questions um, about how long did it take to form all the fossil systems in the geological column. So if you want to know a little bit about Master Books versus secular curriculum companies, Master Books would be five months in the flood year. And evolutionists would say it took 500 million years, which is so easy to disprove to me. But about how old are fossils in the oldest, the lowest geological system, which would be the Cambrian, flood geologists would say 5,000 years, and evolutionists would say 500 million years. And it goes down through and contrasts each of these to ask, um, if you found rocks full of dinosaurs, you might call it the dinosaur, a creationist would call it a dinosaur zone, uh, an evolutionist would call it a dinosaur age. And so this is, fossils are really one of our biggest um, battlegrounds between an evolutionary worldview. Mm -hmm. And there are so many fantastic resources. If you have any questions, there are so many good que uh, resources uh, that show like fossils that go through all the strata, the lack of, of transitionary fossils, the fact that some of the fossils from the 500 million year period are found today and are actually living fossils, that shouldn't happen. Um, so just some really, I think the evidence definitely supports the biblical account of creation. Another question that we get is, hey, I'm a mom or my husband and I would like to learn more about these topics. What would be some good books? These definitely will hold an adult's attention. Yes. yes. They're really good. Yes. I've read them. Okay. For fun. The geology I'm book. like that. <laughs> I've read, I've looked at the pictures in most all of them too. <laughs> There's captions, so I actually. There are really good captions. Yeah, you can learn from this. Even, even if you're not into reading a lot of scientific information, these pages are not, that's, it's not hard at all. Not at all, they're good. Yeah. But so, I like to read stuff like that for fun. He doesn't necessarily. <laughs> I have read all of these, though. I have. They're so, good. Um, the geology book covers planet Earth, the ground we stand upon. In, in, I know this word, and my brain's not letting me say it. What's that word? Igneous. Igneous rocks, sedimentary rocks, metamorphic rocks, the Earth's surface, plains, plateaus, mountains, erosional features, geological processes and rates, erosion, deposition, sediments, fossilization, volcanism, the deformation, deformation of rocks, where continents were once created, connected, ugh, metamorphism of rocks, radioisotope decay, which would be in relation to radiometric dating, uh, questions people ask, and this just goes through the, the looking at the geology of the earth from a biblical creation perspective and the biblical creation perspective with a flood, a global disaster, the catastrophe that is evidence of the Bible that shows us what a lot of what we're looking at. And right, so, this also talks about rocks, but it's more in a macro view versus the mineral book that goes intently. Yes. And this talks a little bit about also the the foundation of a biblical, the science, 
the creation science um, philosophy based on the biblical worldview. So the creation, the fall, what happened as a part as the fall, the flood, and what we see as results of the flood, and even some of the things like when you see bending of the rock layers and stuff like that, why why a creationist believes the evidence points to a global catastrophe versus millions of years of um, evolution. Which is why these books as a whole are such an important foundation because they not only explain things about the individual components like fossils, like minerals, they mm -hmm. also give an overall worldview as it's going through. And so each book touches on a different aspect of science, a different aspects, uh, aspect of creation, and talk about God and his creation in a slightly different way. Yes. Now I know Anna's in, she's making comments. Uh, there may be a couple of others too. I'd love it if you would um, just, uh, I know you can't do a lot in, in comments, but maybe you didn't understand. Anna's mentioning the geological column and how amazing it was because she went to public school and was taught that they were separated by how old they were. Um, just what the, the, the mind shift, what it's done. Like for me, when we started getting access to some of these materials and, and we started realizing everything that's here lines up with what the Bible says. And not only is the Bible accurate in the past, but it's also predicting and accurate in what's going on in the future. And so to understand and, and have our faith grow and be able to help other people's faith growing by, you know, the Grand Canyon. Somebody once told me, oh, well, you can't point to the Grand Canyon and believe that there was a flood. And oh, my goodness, the evidence to be able to <laughs> it say that's it. all it does is screams a flood. I yeah. mean, you know, the fact that the top of the canyon is actually lower than the bottom of the canyon and it's a washout and it looks just like the evidence that they've seen in recent catastrophes like Mount St. Helens, it just, you can't help but your faith to grow. Then when you read, the Lord says, for God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. I can believe that so much more because I know that he took such time to put this story together um, in his word. So the archaeology book, fantastic. A lot of times if you watch an archaeological program, you're going to be confronted with a lot of things that would disprove the Bible, disprove um, the stories and accounts in the Bible. This book is just, um, we have some more in-depth books as well. But what is archaeology all about? The land of Egypt, the Hittites, Ur of Chaldees, Assyria, Babylon, the city of gold, Persia, Petra, the Phoenicians, the Dead Sea Scrolls, and Israel. And so... This is the new format, uh, Babylon, the city of gold. There's some information about Babylon, like the rules of law and justice were important to the Babylonians. These humane laws focused on protection for the most vulnerable. What do you want to know? Uh, the big five, who is Hammurabi? What is the biblical account that has many parallels to the biblical flood account? Or what is the Babylonian account? Sorry. Where did the descendants of Noah settle after the flood? Why was the largest ziggurat ever built in Iraq found in such poor condition? How was it that it became the area of Babylon became destitute? And there's information in here about the Tower of Babel and um, It's really a good book. And it's broken down again in the color zone. So your younger students would be able to just read here. Um, and then younger students, grade school, younger students, or yeah. Fifth. And then the high school Fifth. students would read the entire thing. Right. <laughs> so. right. Yeah. Now this gives a lot of very basic beginning information about archaeology. And then for the high school students, we have the, the one that goes... The evidence of the Bible, and then we also have the pharaohs in Egypt, yep. which is, we've enjoyed watching a program recently on the pharaohs, but we know that they're missing it because their timetable is adjusted. So they keep mm -hmm. talking about all these mysteries, but if they followed the biblical timetable, there would be no mystery. 
They would fit perfectly in line with the Bible. Mm -hmm. And those books detail it. Um, Understanding the Pharaoh, understanding. Unwrapping. Unwrapping the Pharaohs. And then the kings. The kings. Unwrapping Mm -hmm. the kings. So, okay. So these four books, archaeology, geology, cave, and fossils, make up our general science too. Like Kristen said, they can be interchangeable and you can adjust them as needed. So, and of course, with all of ours, um, this follows a, there is a four day or five day a week uh, lesson plan that tells you what to do on what day, student activity sheets and quizzes and tests and answer key. What's neat about these is you can do, you can mix these up as well. So the answer or the quiz, the the schedule and the um, activity sheets are in order of each book. So if you wanted to go with just geology, you could do that. If you wanted to even do like just study one specific thing and not do the whole course, you could buy this, the geology book, and do just the geology. Or you could mix and match if you wanted to put together your own using a couple of these mm-hmm. and a couple from the other course. You could do that. It's very flexible that way. Yep. If your student is more interested in fossils and you want to start with the fossil book, it may actually start yeah, with you the could, fossil book. You could do it at any in any order that you want. Yeah. So it starts with the archaeology book. If you wanted to do it differently, you can easily go to, say, the fossil book and do the fossil book first. Right. So. This is not technically a lab course. There are some activities that are not actually scheduled in, but they're on the worksheets. So if you want to go deeper, you want to do some hands-on activities, um, they're scattered throughout the worksheets. Yes. Good. Well, hopefully that was helpful. We highly recommend that set, the Wonders of Creation series, the nine book set, especially it's $99.99 with free shipping. Um, It would make a great Christmas present. Mm -hmm. Uh, It would make a great donation for a church library or to a a pastor uh, or to other homeschool families as well, kind of planting some seeds. We are so thankful somebody did that for us, Um, really Mm -hmm. started us off on this journey and Uh, changed our lives that somebody would take the time to give us something like that. And I'll tell you what this this set does as a whole is a lot of us grew up being told um, about evolution in schools and like in my case my mom said none of that is true and so don't listen to it and then I read a adult book when I was in third fourth grade on the flood and flood geology And so I had that information and I knew that there was evidence for the Bible from a very young age. I understood a lot of the geology surrounding it. Um, But what this does is this takes those things that I didn't completely understand that I had to chalk up to faith, which, you know, faith is foundational. It's good. But these come along and they put the structure to the faith and they explain this is how it works. Mm -hmm. And so now I don't have to only accept it by faith. While I still accept it by faith, I also have an understanding of how it's practically worked out and shown in the world around us in a multitude of levels. So we can see it in the weather. We can see it in the rocks, you know. We can see it under the earth, on the earth, and above the earth. Right. And it and it shows it all in these books. Right. And you may say a lot of times we hear people will say, well, it really doesn't. You know, that's one of those things that people shouldn't, we don't need to. It just divides people. But the reality is when we understand that there is a creator and that he had a purpose, and, and if we follow his plan and his purpose, things work much better for us. Mm-hmm. But we also live in a fallen world and we deal with the consequences of living in a fallen world. We hurt each other. We, we, with books. With books. <laughs> <laughs> we do. We, we, we just, those are the consequences of living in this, in this environment. And when you understand the foundations of that, then the gospel in the New Testament makes so much more sense, presents so much more hope, and even the blessed of the hope of the church that that this is temporary and we have eternity to be to be uh, mindful of where all 
of the effects of sin and suffering will be gone. So mm -hmm. I think it just makes the whole gospel come alive. And I do think it's a foundational topic. So um, anytime we're always happy to provide extra resources, we have, um, I, we have the greatest library of creation science resources from some of the most brilliant minds. In fact, the biggest challenge we sometimes have is having them lower the, um, <laughs> comprehension of the, the vocabulary book from the, PhD level yes. down to, yeah. Sometimes you're just like, that's just hard to read, but, <laughs> but they, our editors do a really good job of, of talking them down and bringing it down to a, a level everybody can understand. Our authors are really brilliant. They really are yes. amazing. Absolutely amazing. And one thing that I would also like to say is that, um, there's a lot of real world applications to learning um, all of these topics. What is going on in churches today is they're feeling the need to get rid of the Old Testament. They're chalking it up as, as they're just fables, they're just all sorts of things, but it, none of it actually happened. It's not historical, it's true. And it's because they bought into the lie of evolution. And they don't realize all of the information that we have that backs up that biblical account. And so in a hasty uh, move, they're just saying, well, it doesn't fit science, the God of science, little mm -hmm. g. So we're going to just instead get rid of the whole Old Testament because it doesn't fit into what we call science. And what they don't understand is when they do that, they're actually stripping away their entire the theology because everything is built upon Genesis. Right. And so this is really important in our faith to understand because when we see that happening, we can say, oh, wait a minute, um, that's not right. And yes, this happened. And yes, there are historical proof of you know, proofs of that of these things happening right and so it's important so that we can discern and be on guard when these things happen in our churches or we're reading about it we can have a deeper understanding of actual current issues that are happening to erode the faith of people undermine marriage underline they're undermine all sorts of things that are mm -hmm. important things to the church even I mean, creation is important. The flood is important because it also teaches that there is judgment. Right. And when we remove sin. the flood from the biblical account, which people have made the attempt to do, when we do that, we mm -hmm. remove consequence that there is a judgment. And that mm -hmm. judgment, we all will stand accountable. So, right. Okay. Well, hopefully this has been helpful. We enjoy talking about Masterbooks product and especially when it builds faith and grows families. Absolutely. We're going to go put some ice on Kristen's shoulder for the, <laughs> the smack of the book. <laughs> and uh, we, we certainly do appreciate the opportunity to serve this market and to serve each of you. We thank you for being part of this uh, group. We've learned so much from, from you. So God bless. Have a good week. We will see you on Teaching Tips Thursday, and um, we'll be announcing what that's going to be about later this week. All right. God bless everybody.